the mounting and locating surface for the fixture we're going to grind have to be absolutely perfect, flat, and parallel. This part came off the five axis and it's flat within a tent. But we're going to take that tent and we're going to start working in millions. So we've got our wheel mounted into our spindle, but one of the problems I already see is that our new wheel pack is wider than the biggest coolant nozzle I have. So as you can see, I have a five inch long wheel and my coolant nozzle is just gonna spray right into the clearances. So what that means is I'm gonna go talk to Trevor and see if we can get a custom 3D printed coolant nozzle for our dual wheel grind. first one we printed, it was losing a lot of coolant down the middle where it wasn't needed. So Titan's idea to make this part more efficient is to do a dual nozzle setup. That way each wheel gets hit properly with the amount of coolant and the amount of force. Trevor was able to get that done on his Mark Forge super fast. So if you want to check out more on the Mark Forge products, make sure you check out titansofcnc.com. Now, what's gonna make this part special is a carbon reinforced onyx that's gonna be able to withstand the pressures coming out of our main coolant line. Our coolant nozzle is spraying over both of our wheels, so let's get grinding. So the first portion of my program is I've written a dual wheel grind that's gonna be just doing a straight plunge in. That way I can cover the entire surface. The roughing wheels I'm using on my dual wheel setup is a 60 grit 11 porosity. That's gonna be a very high porosity. That's gonna give me good breakdown and good chip removal. Now this is more of a creep feed wheel. So that's why we're gonna go ahead and use it as a roughing wheel. Once I switch over to my finishing wheel, it's a 120 grit eight wheel. That means the pores are gonna be tightly packed and that's gonna act more as a polishing wheel. So one benefit of using the dual wheel setup or any other type of roughing and finishing operation is you don't have to slow the process down by using one wheel and taking a light cut, that way you can get a good finish. So our finish looks great. Now let's go ahead and clean the machine and flip the part. Let's talk about what I did at the end of my grinding cycle. So right now the wheel is done grinding, but I have what's known as a ringing of the wheel written into the bottom of my program. So ringing of the wheel, what that means is as the wheel's done grinding, it's actually gonna spin itself out. That way it can remove any excess coolant. So with grinding wheels, if you just go ahead and cut the wheel off, and that excess coolant that's in the wheel can actually seep to the bottom of the wheel and cause your wheel to go out of balance. And that can lead to chatter in your grind. That can lead to all kinds of different things that can mess you up. So what you always wanna do is make sure you wring out your wheel for at least a couple seconds. That way you can get that excess cooling out and get to grinding when you have to. Now, since the part is symmetrical on all sides, all I had to do was flip the part up and retouch my Y. That way my wheels know where the top of my part is. So again, for my roughing wheels, I took off three thousandths and one pass and did two spark out strokes. Now I'm switching over to my 120 grit pink wheel and I'm gonna do a final pass at a thou and a half with five tenths per pass. All right, she's looking good so far. Give her a quick rinse off. 
So what I'm really focusing on is making a clean path. That way when I drag this part off the magnet, I'm not scratching up my freshly ground surface. So you might be wondering why I use coolant before I use air. Say you have a lot of grit and swarf on your table and you start hitting it with air, well that can make your machine turn into a, basically a sandblaster. And that can totally destroy your surfaces and get you out of tolerance parts. So it's always better if you can to spray it off with water and then come back and spray it off with air. That's gonna give you repeatability and keep your machine nice and clean. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually filling for any dirt or swarf with my hands. If you have anything on there, normally you can pick it up with just your hands. That's why it's so important to make sure that your surface grinding table is clean from any debris because anything that gets up under your part can throw off your flatness or parallelism. That's one of the things we're gonna be making sure we have correct on our part. So I wanna make sure my table is absolutely perfect. So I just finished grinding all four sides to a minimum cleanup. Now the main thing about this fixture is I have to make the locating surface and the mounting surface absolutely flat and parallel to each other. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by grinding the mounting surface, which is gonna be mounted to the table, and then I'm gonna flip it over and grind the locating surface. There's a couple different ways I can go about this. Now I don't wanna have my wheel on my part too long because that can cause burning. So if I have the part traveling down in X and it's going across, that wheel might sit on that part just a hair too long, which could lead to burning. But if I turn my part, that gives me less surface area for that grinding wheel to make contact with the material and minimizes the chances of burning. So you always wanna remember that if you can get away with it, that's the best way to go about it. If this part was perfectly square, what you can actually do is you can turn it to an angle and then really just get across that part super fast, super clean and right on size. So we got our part located in the machine. Now I've done some grinding with my finishing wheel and that's the wheel I'm gonna be using to touch the top and the bottom of the mounting and locating surface. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna go ahead and go dress it. Now we haven't talked about the dress, but for this wheel, I'm gonna be running at 6,500 surface feet a minute at 10 inches per minute across the wheel with my diamond. For my finishing operation, I'm gonna be running the 120 grit wheel at 6,500 feet per minute. Now that might be a little fast for our soft wheel, but I'm gonna be pushing it at 300 inches a minute and that's gonna give me the proper breakdown. That way I can challenge this wheel to give me a good finish on the part. But I'm gonna go ahead and run it and check the finish and see how it comes out. Here's something cool I wanna show you if you're new to surface grinding. So this part came directly off a mill. Now the mill is gonna do a great job at really squaring up your part. But as you can see here, I have a non cleanup on my surface, even though I took a thousands. That's why grinding comes into play when you're making precision parts. Something like this that I won't flatten parallel with its other side, I wanna go ahead and put it on the grinder because as the mill mills it out, it could spring on you. So once we take that part off of the mill and all the distresses come out of that part, we can load it into the surface grinder and take some light cuts that way we're not inducing more stress into the part and make the part flat. So now that I kind of explained why surface grinding is important, let's go ahead and do a final pass and get a full cleanup on our surface. All right, we just completed the sixth and final side of our part. Man, that looks absolutely amazing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and clean this part up. If you wanna take a guess on what the RA is gonna be, go ahead and hop in our comment section and leave a comment. While you're there, go ahead and like and subscribe, and we'll see you in inspection to check out that RA. All right, so remember we ground against the short side, so that means we wanna check against the grain and measure down the long side. So with that, I got three and a half, and that's great for the fixture we're doing. Now let's move on to the next step, check flatness and parallelism. So I want the top and the bottom of my part to be parallel within one tenth, 
So I'm checking all along the length of the part and across four corners. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it to Travis and he's gonna put it on his CMM so he can check flatness. He took over 100 points on our plane. We're flat within 50 millionths. So that's gonna be perfect for our part. So we just got back from inspection. We did a minimum cleanup using our double wheel setup and a polishing wheel and got an amazing RA. And we did all this on our blown Profimat XT. So I ran both the Plano Mag Grinder and the Profimat Grinder. The Profimat Grinder has way more horsepower, but as you can see, we can still get down to the nitty gritty and take very tight tolerances on our blown Profimat XT. If you want to see more grinding content, make sure you stick around and we'll see you on the next one.